is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We're doing a how to come build a competitive Chaos Space Marine list. So beers in 40k. Thanks for clicking on the channel. Uh, we got a ton of videos about the armies that we play. Also recruiting other Dirtbags to join the Dirtbag Nation to help out with armies that we don't play. So that way they can add it to the Dirtbag Nation. You guys can help each other out uh, all across the, the, the world, really. So uh, we got a lot of Patreon Dirtbags all over the world. So thank you guys. Thanks for supporting the channel. You guys are fucking awesome. I wouldn't be doing this without you. So if you guys want to head over to Patreon, uh, definitely get head over. You get first access to these videos and you get to support the channel and have us grow and hire more awesome dirt bags like we did uh, Matt uh, and Mike. So we're going to bring up bringing on more people uh, in 2024 right after LVO. We're going to have a huge growth uh, like we just did in the last video with 6,000 views in the past four days, which is awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, but with this video solely, we're going to go over how to build the mindset uh, competitive list with Chaos Space Marines. We're gonna do a general one, uh, how to build 40K uh, list in general, but this one's specifically solely focused on Chaos Space Marine. This is gonna be our list that we're bringing into uh, LVO. Been doing really well with it. Uh, we're gonna go over uh, two other lists. We got three lists today uh, that you guys can use, just kind of like start off, uh, tweak the way your play style is and how you wanna run it, uh, and then kind of give me suggestions on what other stuff you wanna be seeing on the channel uh, moving forward. So first off, head over to Discord. Uh, not first off, listen to the video, then head over to Discord, head over to Patreon, uh, and then hit me up on Discord if you wanna be a competitor dirt back. So let's get into the video. First off, we're gonna go over uh, what Chaos Space Marine is uh, as a whole, really. The army rules is very unique. Uh, you basically do dark packs every single time, almost every single turn, uh, and you're gonna be hurting yourself if you fail the dark packs. So there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna go over on our list that are gonna be based off of the Dark Pact and the mark that you're bringing. I did a marks video for Chaos Space Marine, it's on the channel. It specifically goes over who you should be putting marks on and what type of marks go best with each unit. So go check that out, that's actually a really good video. Uh, so first off, you get lethal hits and sustain hits. That's gonna be in the other video, but this video, those are what you're gonna be building your army around. Do I want to just shoot a shit ton? Do I want to go after big tanks with the lethal hits? Or do I just want to explode a ton uh, with Nurgle and Slanesh and, and all the fun stuff? Then we have the, the mark of uh, chaos, which you can choose Korn, Zinch, Nurgle, Slanesh, and Undivided. A lot of your lists are going to be built based off of these marks and what you want to do specifically with each unit. Again, that video is very good on these marks if you want to go check that out. And obviously stratagems. So if you're building your list based off of specific stratagems that you're planning out, turn one, turn two, turn three, uh, and having a unit that's going to be either really tanky that can fall back, shoot, and charge, or get the advance and charge off, or create guys back, uh, like Zinch, stuff like that, you're going to be building your list based off of uh, these stratagems as well. So I have a little uh, tidbit on some one to four things on what you want to be doing as you're building a list. So let's go over that now. Uh, first off, when you're starting to build a list, I go over this with all of my patrons is you want to basically find out what your play style is. Do you want to play very aggressive? Do you want to play very passive? Are you kind of like a mixture of both? Do you want to have a really, really hard to kill uh, unit or units? Or do you want to just kind of be a surgical tool and go out and just have surgical precision killing units like an assassin uh, and then trade really well. So there's a lot of different play styles out there. You really have to figure out what yours is gonna be. There's a lot of games that you should be playing to kind of figure out what you like. This game's all about just having fun, rolling dice and just meeting new people. So figure out what you like to do on the tabletop. Uh, my play style, just to give you an example, if you haven't seen already, I like to be very aggressive uh, with most of my stuff and I wanna trade up. That's how I play the game, is no matter what unit I'm doing, I wanna get their points out of it. That's a good uh, perspective of 40K as a whole, is when you're playing the game and I have a 150 point unit, they better fucking kill at least 150 points or get me 150 points worth of secondaries, that's gonna be an even trade for me to be happy with me playing that unit. Great example is the Forge Fiends, they're 180 points and they trade up almost every single time you put them on the table. If they don't trade up, you're either fucked up or the other opponent like had a really good counter on you that can kind of kill your Forge Fiend before you even get to shoot with them. Every time you shoot with a Forge Fiend, you usually get way more than 180 points out of them. So that's what I mean by using the unit that you really like and trading up. That is my play style. I want to be super aggressive, kill shit, 
and trade up with most of my stuff. So uh, figure out what your play style is and then you can start tweaking your list on what you wanna do there. A lot of people just kinda like chilling back and just being super tanky. Back in 9th edition, if you played 9th edition, we used to have a trans hitman, which you couldn't hit my unit unless it was a full ride and there's no rerolls. So that 10 man fucking terminator brick just never died, never got hit. Uh, and then it was minus one to wound. It was plus one toughness. They have a four up fucking invo. Like they had basically every tool imaginable and they were super hard to kill. So that play style was super fun because they killed a lot of shit. And the teleport thing where they can teleport across the table once per game, they were super aggressive. So my play style, they were super aggressive, killed a lot of shit, and they traded up very, very well. So that's why I liked it so much. So this edition, they're not as tanky, but my play style changed and switched to different units. So, all right, let's go over um, the number next one, which would be the core of the list. When you're building a list, what do you want to put as the core of the list? Abaddon could be an example of like, all right, I'm going to build around Abaddon. I'm going to build around his rerolls. I'm going to build around his four-up invuln save. I'm going to build around his reroll of, of whatever. Nobody used that one. So what do you want to build around as the core of your list? If you bring a land raider, that might be the core of your list. If you bring possessed, that might be the core of your list. Uh, mainly it's a big unit or multiple big units that you're going to be building around and figuring out what type of secondaries you're going to be taking uh, and where you're going to be deploying and how you're going to be building your list to not counter it, but in, like grow it, like make it better better perform on the table. For example, a land raider. So I'm gonna have Abaddon with the full rerolls, Nurgle, uh, a, a fucking tech priest, like uh, Hellbrute. All that stuff is gonna be the core of my list and everything else added is just sprinkles on top. So figure out what the core of your list you wanna build. Uh, 10 man Terminators with Abaddon, that could be the core of the list. Uh, 10 man um, Legionnaires with Abaddon with four of and save, like one of our lists. A Cursed Cultist, three squads of them. Like all those are different examples of core of your list on what you want to put in the middle of it and then build and add more to it. Thirdly is secondary units. Chaos have a lot of good secondary units and we're gonna go over a lot of them in these three lists, but we have to add secondary units in every list we build. Not just Chaos Space Marines, but no matter what army you have, you specifically have to bring secondary units. Again, we'll go over it in, in this, but if you have a full kill FU list, you're probably going to lose, honestly, because you don't have enough focus on secondaries and getting to secondaries and starting the board on secondaries, stuff like that. You have to basically add units that are solely focused on getting secondaries. So that would be the third thing to focus on is once you have your play style, once you have the core of your list, third, you're going to build secondaries and adding secondaries, which we'll go over in this as well. Lastly is testing. When you're going into a GT or tournament or whatever, a lot of RTTs are for testing because you get three games in a day. It's a super fun time. But when you're testing, you don't want to tweak everything about your list. You don't want to cut half of it and bring another half new stuff in because that's a completely different list. When it comes to tweaking, you might change a five-man unit to a 10-man unit, a 10-man unit to a five-man unit, change different marks, uh, change different weapon profiles, deploy people differently, deploy people off the board, Deep striking, rapid reserves, change a mark from uh, undivided to, to, to Nurgle to have them not be shot at instead. Those are the type of tweaks that you're going to be practicing uh, in your test games so that way you know, all right, this is the core of my list, this is my play style, and now I have everything. I'm just testing one unit at a time, taking these bikes out for seekers, taking seeker, seekers out for bikes. That's kind of what you're going to be doing when it comes to testing your list in 10th edition. So. Uh, that is obviously gone over a, a, a lot, but those four things you want to be focused on every single time you build a list in 40k, especially 10th edition. So next we'll go over our first list. Cheers, which is a uh, Abaddon uh, test. So this is just called Abaddon test. This is kind of like an all comers, really good competitive list that I made uh a while ago and been tweaking it based off the games that I've been playing. So first off, you have Abaddon. Abaddon's gonna be in here for either the four up invuln save for your dark commune or the rerolls because we have some forge fiends. So let's go over the list. First, Abaddon, two different options. You can put them uh, in this list. We have Legionnaires, five men. So we probably have them doing the, the rerolls. So rerolls, everything within six inches uh, and you could dark pact as well. So dark commune, 
is in there because they're attached to an accursed cultist unit. The dark Kami gives so much to, to an accursed cultist, it's undivided. You can make one of these Nurgles if you really want to, uh, which I've been testing out a, a lot lately. Nurgle on an undivided, or Nurgle on a dark Kami accursed cultist unit is deadly <laughs> because you could spend one cp and not be shot at like this fucking 25 man brick that's coming down to like numbers it's almost dead you just spend one cp boom now it can't be shot you bring three guys back and it's just it's, it's just a hassle to deal with but they give uh advanced and charges once per game plus one to hit plus one to wound once per game a five up invuln save built in uh and it's a character that you can put on objective uh and get more points for that one second or for that one mission that we play in uh in tournaments so a dark commune with a curse cultist, very, very good combo. And they actually bring four extra bodies that they can take wounds off before the curse cultist. So I found this out where your mind, Witch, your iron narc, your blessed blade, that's four extra units that uh, you can, cause it's a unit, you can take wounds off before the character in the unit takes wounds. So since these guys aren't characters, you can allocate damage to them. So that's four extra big ass shots that can they, they can die before the accursed cultists die. So that, that's a pretty cool trick. So two dark communes, because two units of ACDC, I'm gonna call them ACDC, accursed cultists, dark commune, ACDC, uh, is very good in 40K right now. Very, very good for their points and they make it up uh, on points secondaries and opsec so they're two opsec each for your uh, curse cultist blobs which is insane so there's tw there's 16 of them so it's 32 opsec for a unit plus the five on top of that so it's 37 opsec on one unit of a curse cultist all right so those are the dark communes uh we have two of them in this list again one can basically hold a flank down by itself and the other one can come in from rapid uh, ingress which i've been doing a lot lately uh which we'll get into rapid ingress in a little bit then we have basic uh, cultists. So both of them have Nurgle. Nurgle strat is really good for secondaries on cheap units like Nurgles, uh, sorry, cultists, because when they're in the backfield, they actually give you sticky objectives. So on turn one, you're gonna be starting them on your home objective, maybe another objective, uh, and they're gonna make it sticky so that we don't really have to worry about it. You're kind of just blocking it out if they don't have any deep strikes or reserves. You don't have to worry about it as much uh, if somebody blasts them off the table with indirect. So if they get targeted turn one before you make it sticky, you basically spend one CP, now they're uh, Nurgled, and they can't be targeted outside 12 inches. So then at least you're guaranteeing that you're gonna have a sticky objective turn one or turn two with your, uh, your cultist mob. So we have two of them. One can start more on the other side, one can start in the back, but having two cultist mob block out your entire backfield, and people don't wanna waste their shots on cultists, um, Plus, especially with one CP, you can have them not be shot at. So you have your entire 20 man blob just, or it's two 10 mans, but two 10 mans in each quarter blocking out entire side of the table. They're really good at secondaries because they can kind of keep within 15 inches of the corner. So that way if you get um, engage or the signals where you have to be within nine inches of, of an edge, wholly within nine inches of a corner, they can basically just walk six inches uh, and get into that corner within nine inches and do an action. So you basically have two of them on both corners most of the game. So that way when you do get investigate signals, you do it. And the next turn they just run, advance and then spread out the entire time. Once you get investigate signals, they spread out and block out the entire uh, board edge for 50, 50, excuse me, 55 points or 110 points for two of them. Legionnaires, let's go over them. 90 points for 10 extra wounds for Abaddon. That's kind of your mindset with these guys. Uh, you can bring a last cannon with them, just so it's one long range uh, heavy weapon shot, which has exploding fives or auto wound on fives because they're with Abaddon. But why I like these guys is because they can actually bring a icon for Abaddon. So the icon lets you re-roll dark packs, which if you fail a dark pack, you can re-roll it and then try and get your two plus for Abaddon getting a CP. That is huge in some games sometimes sometimes when you don't get cp you, you're planning out that extra cp almost every single turn so if you don't get it you're kind of fucked like you you, you needed that extra cp for the fallback shooting charge the uh, advance in charge the full rerolls hit and wound with uh, undivided in both phases so the, ha, losing out on that extra cp is huge so the legionnaires either a five or ten man they help out abaddon specifically in the list that you're trying to build 
for those for that exact reason also when you actually do commit abaddon to go kill something big if that's something big or, or units big on an objective they get full rerolls to wound so now abaddon gets full rerolls to wound when something is on an objective so he's he's charged out fucking hitting on twos reroll ones because of undivided exploding on fives it is it is insane how many attacks he gets and then he does devastating wounds on sixes and full fucking wounds so most times he's gonna wound on twos with full wounds so any sixes that you don't get just fucking roll all of them again uh and then you do devastating wounds on that he's killed so many terminators and tanks uh just with that combo right there and then when he does uh, expose himself, uh, he can do full rerolls on himself or the four up invuln save for his legionnaires to survive a little bit longer um, as well. So his reroll, full rerolls to hit, exploding fives, and then full rerolls to wound without spending CP with your legionnaires. So very, very good combo with the legionnaires and it's 90 points. Then we have uh, two Chris Cultists, both undivided. Uh, again, up to you if you want to do one Nurgle, one Undivider, both undivided. But one of these guys can be very aggressive and come in from Rapid Ingress. So they just walk on the table edge uh, after turn two uh, for one CP outside of nine inches of, a, of an enemy. And then on, on your turn, you can advance and charge them with the Dark Commune and just fucking wreak havoc with them. They are so scary coming in from uh, reserves. It's the worst saying I always tell my guys and, and the team is are you done your movement phase <laughs> like that sentence is one of the scariest asshole tightening sentences in all of 40k are you done your movement phase are you done your movement turn are you done are you done your movement asking that it's like oh fuck where did i fuck up where did where did, where did i not block out oh shit and then you fucking instantly just grab your curse cultists and plop them down on, on the side of the table as you really want to take over and then they can't be shot at most of the time because you're behind something uh and then if they do get shot at it just helps you build guys like make an extra big guy uh, which gets you an extra four inch movement and then they can advance and charge and get plus one hit plus one wound four year olds to hit four years wound. they were fucking kill whatever they touch that's why we have two of them so two of them in the list uh because it's, it's just insane bikes so not a lot of people talk about bikes but i think bikes are one of the underplayed most important units that chaos space marine have for secondaries so this is going to go into why we're bringing bikes for secondary specifically is because they are nurgle so they can not be shot at uh to keep them for later in the game for secondaries i have two plasma guns and a plasma pistol in my unit which with nurgle if you dark pack you can explode on fives so there's been so many times where they come in shoot five five times exploding fives so then those five go to seven or eight hits uh and then wounding on twos or threes with your plasma ap3 two damage it's 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 really good uh yes they might kill themselves yes they might fail a dark pack but still it's worth it every single time when you play them aggressively if you don't have any secondaries or you already got enough secondaries you don't really need them anymore so that's one thing is nurgle they can explode uh aggressively with their plasmas second thing is nurgle they can't be shot outside 12 inches so if they're in the backfield or doing an action or in the center don't put them in the center just keep them within six inches of the table edge uh because if they can't be shot outside 12 inches, they're going to survive for another turn, come off the table edge, and then go go back on and do uh, secondaries. Anytime I see bikes on the other side of the table, I try and kill them as soon as possible because I know what they do. I know they're very good at secondaries, and they're going to get my opponent a lot of secondary points if I don't deal with them. So, And they're really hard to deal with because of the Nurgle strat. So three bikes, pretty easy to hide, uh, pretty low to the ground, and they're long bases, so you can actually block out a lot of portion of the table with them. So turn one, you're basically deploying and you're starting them all the way in the backfield, like in a corner somewhere in case you get investigate signals or, or cleanse or whatever it may be. So they're starting all the way in the back, um, waiting till your opponent's turn. Now, once your opponent's done their turn, you can remove them from the table and putting them into strategic reserves. The ruling with strategic reserve is they don't have to come back on until you need them. Meaning that most of the time, if you start in reserves, you have to come back on by turn three. If you don't, they die. But if you start on the table and you get placed in the strategic reserves after turn one, like after the start of the game, they can then come back on from strategic reserves at any time. I mean, in the in reform, but any turn after that, even turn four and turn five. After turn five, if they're not on the table, obviously they die. But 
that's what makes them so good is because if you bring them off turn one and you don't need them turn two or even turn three, you can basically just bring them back on, block out your table edge, wait till your opponent's done their, their turn, take them back off if you don't need them, bring them back on, block out your table edge. If you don't need them, take them back off, bring them back on. Oh shit, I got a secondary that I need them for, engage in all fronts. Let me fucking put them all the way on the other side of the board. Uh, and boom, now I just got an extra three, two or three points for that specific secondary. So that's why bikes are so sneaky and kind of going all around the table. Once I saw that rule, I was like, these guys have to be in every single list. Like they are just so good for what they do for secondaries. So that's why we bring the bikers. Um, just if you haven't tried them, try them. It takes a little bit of skill to, to test them out and get used to them. If you try them and they die, try them again. Just be a little bit more uh, defensive with them. Don't let them get shot um, up close and don't put them in combat. A lot of people put a, a power fit. Don't put a power fist on them. You don't want them in combat. You want them to shoot and then fucking do secondaries. That's it. Uh, next, we have Forge Fiends. So here we go. Here's the fun shit. Three Forge Fiends because we have full rerolls with Abaddon. So we have one Nurgle, two Nurgle because the exploding. Now again, they're not uh, Ectoplasm, Ectoplasm, and this one Auto Cannon. Mike's been running the Auto Cannon, says it's amazing. And with the Undivided, you can spend one CP and get full rerolls to hit and wound, fishing for the sixes to wound for the devastating wounds. Um, and it doesn't have to be near Abaddon. So if you put two Forge Fiends near Abaddon, they're getting full rerolls to hit, uh, hit uh, exploding on fives. So it's just a shit ton of rerolls and a shit ton of explodes. And then their strength 10, so the wounding most shit on twos, threes, and fours against vehicles. Fives sometimes. But um, it's damage three, AP three, devastating wounds. Like they they make up their points so much in this edition uh, for 180 points. So having two of these guys in the backfield, getting like different angles on, on stuff, uh, they're getting a lot of rerolls from Abaddon uh, and exploding on fives. Then this guy can be in reserves. The uh, undivided one can come in from uh, reserves somewhere where you really need him like focus down something or, or a tank because of the devastating wounds. They can come in from reserves, not be anywhere near Abaddon, spend one CP, four rules to hit, exploding on sixes, four rules to wound, sixes do devastating wounds. So you have that with the auto cannons, and then obviously the one D3 blast ectoplasma shots. Um, really good for a combo. So we have three Forge Fiends uh, in the list. This is what makes them even scarier, is the fucking Hellbrute. So we have two Fists with two Heavy Flamers in case somebody gets in our backfield, like Gene Steel Cold or Grey Knights or something like that, um, or come down within three inches. Eldar this is really good into Eldar. But two Heavy Flamers makes people not want to uh, get overwatched by him. And then two Fists is just in case anybody gets anywhere near Abaddon, he just walks up and... Pfft, Double, <laughs> double fist them. Uh, Nurgle, so you don't want him to get shot at. Uh, if somebody actually does get a line on him, you don't want him to be shot because he's going to be kind of like the crutch of the list because with the full rerolls to hit with Abaddon, the four trains being Nurgle, they crit explode on fives. They also crit wound on fives. So let's say we roll six dice. Uh, we get three fives, which means three dice get pulled out, becomes auto wounding, and then we get three dice back in uh, which explode, so they hit. Um, and then you reroll the misses, and then let's say we get another two fives, two of them get taken out into the auto wounding, and then two go back in for the explodes. So basically you hit three, four, five times, and then you have five auto wounding already. Holy shit, that, that's what the Hellbrew does. It lets you get sustain and uh, lethal in one round when you dark backed. So, that's what makes them so deadly is 140 points right next to the six inches of Abaddon's rerolls. Now the four chains within six inches of him, the, everything basically gets a uh, exploding fives auto winning on fives. So that's the combo with the Hellbrew and the four chains. I, it's just, it's so you feel sorry, like when it goes off. Uh, but let's go into the alley unit. So we have our core of the list, which is the forge fiends, Hellbrew, Abaddon. Uh, then we have the second part of the list, which is the Accursed Cultists and Dark Commune. And then the secondary units, we have the Bikers, uh, Cultists, and now we have these guys down here. So Flamers, they're very good in secondaries because they can advance. I think they can fall back as well. So fall back, advance, and shoot and do an action. So since they can fall back in action, that makes them a lot juicier for secondary targets because a lot of times if they get tied up most of the time you're going to be stuck because you can't do an action 
when you're tied up because you they don't have any pistols you're not eligible to shoot so if they can fall back now they're eligible to shoot they can then do an action plus their speed eight or nine so basically if they start on the front edge of the board they can hop out to do cleanse hop out to do aerial denial pretty easily uh four secondary points and they're behind a wall so if you don't need them to go out turn one you just kind of keep them behind the wall and wait for the secondary to be picked and then they go do their secondary points so flamers very good at secondaries. 80 points is a little steep. Um, if we had an extra five points, we could probably bring another unit of bikes uh, or something like that. But for 80 points, we had exactly, this guy is, or Flamers are three men, four have been vulnerable and save, three wounds, like really good for the points. Um, Flamers are gonna be our first secondary unit uh, of the allied units. Then we have Nurglings. Nurglings are really good uh, in this edition. They're 35 points, so the one the cheapest three model units you can bring in the game. They're gonna be there because they can uh, pre-game move or pre-game advance deploy. Um, I always forget what infiltrate, they infiltrate. So they can be set up on two different corners turn one or you can start one of them on one corner and then deep strike the other one for waiting till turn three for secondaries. Uh, or you can just put them both on the table so that way they can get investigate signals on both sides, uh, engage in all fronts, stuff like that. Or they can just block out the field uh, for other infiltrators, uh, with most of the time space marines, so that way at least one side of the field they can't come within nine inches, uh, or anybody that's pregame move like world eaters, they can kind of be spread out, so that way they can't pregame move within nine inches of them. So they can be used for a lot of different tools in 40k uh, in 10th edition. So Nurgles for 35 points, they're very good at secondaries, they're very good at just being annoying and not wanting to be shot at, uh, and they have a minus one to hit aura within six inches in melee. So if you have these guys kind of sneakily behind your cursed cultists, now your cursed cultists, if they get charged, or you charge in, you advance up your nurgles, nurglings to be within six inches of a unit that you're attacking. Now that unit's minus one to hit you back, which is gonna be even tougher to kill the your cursed cultists with these guys. So using that as well as to your advantage with the minus one to hit uh, makes it really, really good. Uh, for 35 points so they're also very good if i could bring three units i would but with this list specifically we have two units of them and the flamers you could take out the uh, flamers and add nurglings and then um actually a six-man unit nurglings if you really want to for 70 points but completely up to you this is kind of all up in the air this is just what i've been running uh and then seekers seekers is the secret tech if you guys are patreon or uh on the discord you know that seekers are my secret tech uh they are 85 points so same as bikes they have a scout move nine which is so fast and their speed 14. they get plus one to their charges or advances and they get to re-roll their charges for free all that built in um their speed 14 if i didn't say that already so basically what you do is you start them on the line now you want to make sure that you're starting defensively where if they're on the line you want to be able to move nine inches to be defensive so they can't be shot at turn one or you move them nine inches back behind a wall or kind of move them forward behind a wall or sideways like wherever you fucking want to make sure that you put them down so that way you can move behind a wall turn one so they don't die then on your turn you can pull your secondary see what you get and now they're really fast you either go in the center go try and kill something go take over an objective do cleanse whatever it may be they're super fast to kind of spread out and do everything these guys are mainly in there to either block out your opponent turn one or get behind enemy lines behind enemy lines is really hard to get uh turn one for armies that are either slow or not set up properly for it so seekers are my advantage to that where i can pregame move nine Right, you roll to see who goes first. If you go first, you pre scout move nine, see what your secondaries are behind me lines. Great, they're gonna either advance to give me behind me lines and block out the opponent, or move up and then charge something small to kill something or tie them up, tie up vehicles, which is great, uh, and then just kind of spread out and block out the opponent. There's been so many games you guys might have seen on my channel where I had these guys completely spread out and blocking out almost the entire board edge. Uh, for my opponents who he literally can't do anything in turn one. He can't move out of his deployment zone. He can't really do anything. He has to kill him. He has to do something. And then at that point, my Akira's cultists are fucking running forward like to get into in engagement range. And then on my turn two, they're now in range to advance and charge. And then again, keep them in their deployment zone. So for 85 points, these guys make up their points every single time, whether they die after one turn, which most of the time they do, but they have to deal with them. That's it. They have to deal with them which then take shots off of my 
other guys on the back that are slowly or fastly getting to my opponent. So that's why Seekers are in this list. Uh, if you haven't tried them out or haven't looked them out, go check them out on the app. They are very, very good for 85 points. I can't wait to go to LVO and see how many Seekers are in lists at LVO. So they're definitely in my list. So, all right, so that's one list. Uh, again, it's my all comers in general list that I've been running with. The other two lists are gonna be a little bit shorter uh, because most of them use the same concept uh, and, and units as this one does but it's a little bit uh, different kind of play style, stuff like that. So let's go over this, the second list. I need another beer. All right, cheers. Uh, second list is gonna be chosen now. What's his name? Somebody won, Liam, won a LGT with Chaos Space Marine. So Chaos Space Marine are, are, are in the high right now. He ran it without Abaddon. So obviously option with Abaddon, without Abaddon, but he ran three Chaos Lords. Um, and two five mans and a 10 man of chosen. This one is kind of just a 10 man chosen to really test him out, put him in a rhino and kind of go out and just have fun with him. But if you want to be more of like Liam, which not a lot of people are going to be like Liam, like he's fucking incredible uh, how he plays the game. But this list builds around an easier kind of way to run the chosen. Uh, and I've tested it and it just, it kills <laughs> a lot of shit. So different options, which we'll go over, but Abaddon, same thing in there for either the four of one save, the four rolls, whatever it may be. Uh, then we have the dark commune again, really good if you just have one unit with them, just to kind of be focused on secondary or just sit on an objective and never fucking move. Uh, you can make it Nurgle if you're really if you if you're not going to do a lot of damage with them and you just want them to just sit back and just hold down a flank. Nurgle is a really good option, just so that way they can't be shot outside twelve inches. Because uh, most of the time, if they if they die, it's either to another forge fiend <laughs> with blast plus 12 shots, which is fucking nuts, or the Space Marines that have four reels to hit, four reels to wound, 75 wounds go through, it's it's nuts. So that's the really only reason why they die. But if they're Nurgle, they just can't be shot outside 12 inches. So one of them is is very good to have. Then we have Fabius Bile. I haven't tested this out yet, but Fabius Bile, a lot of people have been saying is, first, he's really cool. The model's fucking awesome. The lore is awesome. He's just, fucking awesome he negates one of the uh damages coming into the unit once per turn i believe or once i think it's once per turn he can negate uh, a big shot so when dev wounds was mortal wounds and that used to carry over used to be able to just be like nope that one fucking 12 do 2d6 damage shot is now negated uh for the unit once per turn so he also gives plus one strength plus one uh toughness to a unit which is going to be the chosen unit so since you could have 12 models in a uh a rhino you can put fabius bile with the chosen in a rhino and still be uh at 12. so because he has uh the surgeon accolade and fabius bile uh so that's 12. he's pretty beast in combat as well i think he has a three damage uh it's like six attacks hitting on twos uh weapon uh and just giving the uh, um chosen toughness five now and then strength six because i think their cursed weapons are strength five and then fabius bottles make up strength six is a huge threshold um to a lot of stuff so that's why we're testing out that and he's 85 points so that's why we're testing out it now the other option with this if you want to spend more points is the lord um you can put the lord with him to get the free uh, uh four year olds to hit and wound uh, if you make them undivided, you can bring in the champion, which lets your unit hit on twos, which shooting and uh, shoot and um, melee, so they hit on twos. You can do the uh, master of execution, which if the opponent has uh, is under, it has taken one wound, just one wound or one guy dead, your whole unit gets full rerolls to hit against that guy. Um, or you can combo, so one champion and one curse, uh, master of execution. I used to try that in a rhino with 10 chosen, it was super scary, especially then with corn. So, there's a lot of different combos you can have with a chosen unit to make it more fun. And whatever your play style is, that's what you do. Fabius Bob, if you really want to test them out, which I do, I just bought the new model or a model, it's new to me, uh, but I just bought them. I got to put them together and, and put them on the tabletop. Maybe get Mike to paint them. Uh, but Fabius Bile, I definitely want to test out. Then we have a Cultist Mob. Again, should be in every list. Just having at least one sticky objective unit on the backfield. Make it sticky. Then they could die. I don't care. Uh, but they're really there to do secondaries and just block out the backfield after they made it sticky. Make it sticky. Spread out. Block out the backfield. 
Uh, Legionnaires to go with Abaddon. Now you can bring Terminators, you can bring Legionnaires, completely up to you. Legionnaires we already went over, they get full rerolls to, to wound if something's an objective to them and Abaddon. You get the reroll of the Dark Pact, so that way you have a higher chance of getting that 2 plus to do a CP with Abaddon. So just a cheap 90 point sit in the back unit gives Abaddon 10 more wounds to chew through. We have our Rhino with Nurgle. Any really tank uh, in Chaos Space Marine is great with Nurgle. Just because with the transport, they're basically flying forward D6, 12, 12 plus D6 inches forward with this big ass scary unit inside of it. Um, and with Nurgle, they can't shoot outside of 12 inches. So let's say this thing's right in the smack dab center of the board, no cover around you at all and you're facing Tau. Well now, Tau has to get fucking near you to shoot you to blow up your fucking Rhino. So that, first of all, that probably won't happen. Second off is they don't want to get near you because whatever's inside that Rhino is going to destroy whatever gets gets near you. So if you run up your Rhino, make sure you're kind of near a wall. So in case they do blow you up, you kind of get out three inches on the other side of the wall so the guys can't die. Uh, that's a little suggestion when you're running a little Rhino. So. Uh, the Rhino has anything you can put on it, combi weapon, Havoc launcher, combi bolter, uh, and then it basically just runs forward protecting your little guys with the metal box. Chris Coltis already go over with uh, ACDC. Then the bikes, again, I, I run a lot of lists with secondary unit, like good secondary units in it. So that way my main chaff of my army, which we already went over, is gonna be doing what I wanna test out and wanna have fun doing. Chosen are gonna be the main part of the army. Uh, the bikes are just going to be focused on secondaries. So they're doing a really good job at doing secondaries. So that's why I put them in every list. Chosen, again, up to you if you want to do corn, Slanesh, Undivided, whatever you want. But this is basically the loadout you want on them. So your, your champion, you're going to have the icon. You're going to have the power fist and a combi weapon. I don't want to put the plasma on the, on the champion because I don't want them to die. Uh, so then you can have four plasma pistols on these guys. So if they die, who the fuck cares, right? Uh, one power fist, because you can only have two in the squad, which is pretty dumb. Uh, two paired accursed cultists weapons, or curse weapons, so it's basically just extra attacks. Um, so it's just a shit ton of melee. Uh, and then the rest combi bolt weapons. So we basically have four combi weapons, four plasma pistols, and then two power fist, and then two pairs of curse weapons. That's basically the loadout you want to you want to be doing. Uh, and on a five man squad, you just cut it in half. Uh, but all of them have curse weapons. Uh, if you need to do six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so six, seven, eight of curse weapons, and then two power fists is a lot of curse weapons. It'd be two, I believe, one damage, uh, but just a shit ton of attacks. Spend one CP, four reels to hit, four reels to wound, because uh, they're undivided. There are three wounds, which is great for the wound counts uh, to try and have them survive a little bit longer. And now they're toughness five. So toughness five, uh, only a three up save, but toughness five, they get to uh, advance and charge, which is what really makes them really good in the Rhino. So no matter where your Rhino is, they're able to advance out. So it's three inches plus six, which is nine inches plus D6 and then charging. So basically they're going super far out of the Rhino um, and charging whatever the fuck they want to kill. So their target, Super far away, no worry, run the Rhino up, and next turn, advance out of the Rhino, which now goes with um, Fabby Spyro can advance and charge as well because he's a part of the unit. So the models in the unit get to advance and charge uh, in that turn. So now w whatever unit you attach with them, get to advance and charge as well. So that's the chosen, that's the core of the unit, uh, core of the list, the chosen. You can do two five-mans like uh, Liam did, uh, one ten-man or two ten-mans or just one ten-man, completely up to you. Uh, then we have three fortunes again. Uh, same thing, undivided with the auto cannons, Nurgle with the ectoplasma, Nurgle with the ectoplasma. Uh, and then we have a hellbrut. So same thing. These guys are focused in the backfield, providing cover fire uh, shooting, while the chosen and the accursed cultists are moving forward and kind of like sitting on the objectives, waiting for people to come close, so that way they can move up and uh, and get the charges off. Then we have uh, two units of Nurglings and then the Seekers. Same thing as they did uh, last list is they basically move up, block out the field, protecting my, my Rhino from advancing forward, protecting my Chris Cultus from advancing forward. Uh, and then once they move up and kill them, now my Chris Cultus and my Rhino is really far forward. So that way next turn I basically advance and charge with both units 
uh, and then and then get, get get the charge off. So Nurgling, same thing for secondaries and blocking out uh, zones and objectives. But this is our um, chosen list that you guys could be testing out uh, if you want to run the chosen, which I really want to put them on the table. They, they're just such cool models. My chosen I have are Night Lord's theme, so they have a lot of the, the lightning claws I used from the, the Raptors kits. Uh, and then I have a lot of the Night Lord's helmets and the Night Lord's shoulder packs and the chosen bodies, which just are fucking sick looking. So my Night Lord's chosens I really want to put on the table because they just look so fucking cool. Uh, and that's really why I want to run them. So lastly, guys, is my tournament list that I'm actually going to be bringing to LVO. So if you guys are at LVO, definitely come up and say hi. Say you're a dirtbag. I'll give you a dirtbag dice. Uh, we have the Accursed Cultist. That's the list of uh, the name. I have to change the name. So Abaddon is only there for the four of Invuln save to give it to the Dark Commune ACDC units. So that way your entire army is a four of Invuln save and six up field no pain. And comes back every command phase. It's, it's insane. So one, two, three. A lot of people are saying you have to buy this list, which again, I agree with, but you don't want to run 3D prints if they look like shit. Uh, have really cool 3D print. They're really cool 3D printed possessed out there. Those are the ones I use. You can have them as your big accursed cultists, guys. Uh, you can have demonettes or something as your uh, accursed uh, little guys. You can have zombies. Like There's a lot of different cheaper units that if you have lying around or, or don't use a lot, you can use those as other cursed cultists. Now make sure you're asking your TO, stuff like that, but there's a lot of different um, variations of this that you can do that are legal as long as they're Games Workshop models. So 3D print, one thing, but the uh, Games Workshop models that you have to put into as a cursed cultist, you can do that as well. So that's just my suggestion, or you just fucking spend $300 uh, store credit and, and get six boxes of a curse cultist and three boxes of dark commune but you don't have to yeah it's just just for just for fun shits and giggles three units of dark commune two cultist mobs both nurgle again to do the same thing block out the backfield do secondaries make shit sticky uh sometimes you have a lot of secondaries that you have to kind of control so if i'm making more of them sticky so that way my curse cultist can slowly move up and take over the next wave next wave next wave and then all the uh objectives on the backfield are all sticky it's less stress that I have to worry about like, controlling everything at, at, at one given time. So, Legionnaire, same exact thing as we went over. The rerolls for the Dark Pact, the full rerolls to wound on an objective, uh, and 10 extra wounds for Abaddon. I love the 90 point Legionnaires, specifically just to protect Abaddon. He's mainly going to be behind a wall most of the game until somebody gets close and I need to commit him. Um, or he's going to basically run forward behind a wall. That way I know that they can't get behind me. If they can get behind me, he's going to stay behind a wall with the legionnaires strung out behind him and then the cultist behind him. So there's nobody that can get behind Abaddon um, to kill him and then they can only get in front of Abaddon. And then if they're in front of Abaddon, Abaddon can then run through the wall, advance and charge because he's Slanesh and then get and kill whatever the fuck he wants to touch. So then we have uh, Curse Cultist. Curse Cultist. Curse Cultist. So 245 points of each unit. Uh, one of them I have actually as Nurgle, which has been working out for me. They're the ones that start on the table in the center. Um, so that way they can go out and do something turn one or be near an objective and hopefully not get shot too much back. And then one a Curse Cultist, which is undivided, usually is protected behind a wall or cover or whatever it may be. And then I always have one in reserves. And I put one in reserves for Rapid Ingress specifically because when they come in from Rapid Ingress on your turn, uh, they can then advance and charge and take over uh, a whole table quarter by themselves, especially advance and charge plus one to hit plus one to wound. Uh, and they string out to kind of sometimes near be near Abaddon. You don't have to keep them near Abaddon, but most of the time they're going to string out or advance and charge to be near Abaddon. So the way Abaddon can give them the four up and roll and save from all the way across the table. All right, and we got our bikes again. Bikes, one of my favorite units. Uh, really good. I used to have actually two units of bikes in this list, but I took one out for um, Seekers. Uh, and then we have two Forge Fiends, Nurgle. They're basically just there to be by themselves. There's no rerolls. They're just trying to hopefully roll fives to hit so that way they can explode. And with the blast profile, they have a lot of attacks. So if they go into a 10 man Terminator brick with 3d3 blast, it's 3d3. Let's say you roll a uh, six, uh, six shots. And then it's 
two, four, six extra shots. So basically you have 12 shots going into this 10 man uh, brick, uh, hitting on threes, exploding on five. So it might go from like 10 to 11 or 10 to 12 hits, uh, and then winning on twos. Cause strength 10, AP or toughness five, AP three, three damage, devastating. It's, it's, it's nuts. So two of these guys solo, like one of them in reserves, one of them starting on the table, uh, but one in reserves comes in uh, and just picks out what I want to uh, kill that turn. Three units of three Nurglings. I use them mainly for the minus one uh, to hit because I want my Curse Cultists to survive a little bit longer, but they are blocking out corners. They're doing cleanse when I need to. They have to do uh, investigate signals. But after they're done with their secondaries, they basically advance as fast as they possibly can run forward uh, and try and be within six inches of the enemy to give them the minus one to hit. And then lastly, we have Seekers, which we already went over what they do. They're there to block out the opponent turn one so that way my guys can run forward and then we have sile so sile is still up in the air with me i'm not sure what i'm going to do with him the other option is i took out a five man legionnaire so i did have 10 legionnaires in the, in the list prior i took out five legionnaires i took out another bike so bike squad five legionnaires got me sile which does uh gets back up on a two plus so it's six wounds nine wounds sorry nine wounds toughness six six attacks uh, 2d6 flamer shots, six uh, f assault shots, which assault's good because now he can advance and do an action. So if he can advance, speed nine, advance, move nine, d6, and then do an action still, makes him really quick for doing secondaries. So he's mainly in here to help out with secondaries and kind of be like a little beat stick in the backfield, plus he can deep strike. So you deep strike him, do a secondary, then kind of move him or advance him to do another secondary or just kind of be a bully somewhere. He, he's not that bad in combat. I mean, he hits on threes, AP two, three damage, which is like the threshold to kill Terminators. Strength seven. So hits on threes, wounds on threes, and then AP two takes him to the four up inbound save, and then three damage, which kills Terminators. So he's really good at killing Terminators. Uh, Marines, so-so. And then tanks, don't put him into, into melee with a tank. He will not kill or do anything to a tank at all. <sighs> so uh, that is our style. Now this is our, again, L LBO list. We're testing out. Uh, I am 9, 10, 11, about 12 and 0 with this list right now. Super excited about running it. So if you guys really want to test this out, uh, it's it's a lot. Test it on clock. Make sure that you get faster and faster with it every single time you run it and run it on clock. Even if you're practicing, just your opponent be like, hey, I'm going to run clock just on myself. I'm going to hit your side. Uh, just pretend you're, you're doing that and I'm going to go back to my side. Like Play the chess clock to make your time faster with moving this amount of guys because there's a lot of people um so that's what that would be my suggestion if you could run this third list the other two lists are, are fine it's just suggestions on what you want to be but where you want, want to be running but there's my uh insight on three good competitive uh chaos space marine lists and how to kind of build a list pertain to your play style and what you want to put on the table so again it doesn't have to be exactly this there's a lot of tweaks you can do with this it's just chaos are very good and they have a really cool codex there's a lot of units i haven't even fucking talked about warp towns are really good right now run warp towns because they look amazing and they're really quick and they hit really hard with uh slanesh uh auto charging and stuff so try out different lists but use the first four rules we went over which is find your play style make the core of your list Add secondary units for 10th edition and then test, 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 and change variations of every single list. So, guys, appreciate it. If you guys like more of this content, head over to the Discord if you guys want to support the channel. So, all these contents come out to you first up on patreon.com. De definitely get uh, head over and do that. Support us if you guys want to join the competitive dirt bag or the grandmaster dirt bag. You get to message me one on one on Discord and we go over list ideas, tactics, anything you guys want to talk about uh, over on Patreon. So, guys, appreciate it. Good luck. And we'll see you in another video soon. What's up, my Patreon? So thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you guys are new here, there's so much content coming up on Patreon. Uh, we're going to continue to grow the channel. We got other dirtbags joining the channel to make it a huge camaraderie dirtbag nation uh for you guys up on the patreon we have other factions joining the the dirtbags as well it's not just going to be specifically four factions that we play all the time we are really good at those four factions but we have other really good players joining the dirtbags and we really want to grow the channel as much as possible and it really is all thanks to the support from you guys 
donating, getting competitive dirt bags, the grandmasters, all of you guys are just, thank you so much. Uh, this video is really just made to give thanks to you guys who are either joining as you're watching this video or have joined over the past couple months. Uh, you guys have seen me live at tournaments and GTs and even have flown out uh, and, and met me, uh, Cooper, to basically just hang out with us all weekend. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. More is going to grow from the channel in 2024, uh, and I just can't wait to grow the Dirtbag Nation as much as we possibly can. So again, thank you so much. And uh, appreciate you joining the Dirtbag Nation.